Welcome to Nick's Home Court with your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. This is episode number 50. The Big 5-0. I never thought I'd get here. Let me tell you, podcasting is not easy if that's not your livelihood. It's a lot of work. Uh, I apologize for the quality lately as far as the sound quality and things like that. I do a lot of podcasts recently remotely because I want to get it out there. See, the hard part about podcasting is you have to, you know, you have to take make the time to actually podcast. You have to find a quiet space. You can do it in your house. I have a five-year-old. That's not the easiest thing. And I have a wife, and it's not easy, you know, we just do it like that. It, I'm not going to rent a studio. So sometimes I just do it on location. Wherever I'm at, you know what, I got. I want to talk about some Nick stuff. Uh, you know, I want to put some stuff out there. You know, and by the way, you know, I always check to see what's going on in Nick land as far as other podcasts and things like that. And I understand as a Nick fan, me as a Nick fan. Again, I always talk about why I started this, right? Well, one of the reasons I started this is because I feel like there's not enough Nick analysis out there, you know? It's funny is New York should, probably has one of the biggest fan bases as far as the Knicks. In, in, but there's not a lot of stuff out there, especially in New York. And when they are talking about the Knicks, they're not really doing it on, on a national stage and in New York. They're always doing it in a way where it's... Um, not even analysis. It's like because it's the Knicks. You know, I'll listen to some. I'm not. I, I won't get. I heard, I heard somebody. What was it? Uh, David Aldrich. I like him. And he. It was. I was listening to an NBA Eastern Conference preview. And when they got to the Knicks, it was like, well, they're going to be bad. Why? Because it's the Knicks. That was the analysis. KP's probably going to do better, and they're going to be bad. That's it. It's the Knicks. You know, it's just the Knicks. They talk about the Knicks front office like it's been the same front office for 30 years. <laughs> it's amazing. We have a new regime in place. They haven't been there. They haven't been there for long. And I already told you about Scott Mills. Scott Mills was an underling. Under, underlings don't make decisions. They just bring information to the bosses. And unfortunately for him, he's worked with some bad bosses. Now he gets the chance. He gets the shot. And he, he wiggled his way into that spot, too, because he wanted that spot. Because you blame people blame him. Oh, he was a part of it. I don't, understand, I don't believe in blaming uh, uh, underlings because they don't make the final decision. You know, so that's just a little frustrating. And also, I wanted to say, you know, again, I appreciate my listeners. You know, I have on average around 100, which is cool. I appreciate that. It's like we're a small little community. But I'll tell you this. If my show were to blow up or if I were to be hired by say ESPN because I wouldn't turn it down even though I'm not in love with the network maybe they need me I don't know or Fox Sports 1 or one of them sports things or if the podcast just blew up once I move into callers and things like that I'm not going to forget the people the commenters the people who will listen to I really appreciate that because like I get like again like I said it's like a small little Knicks community you know, so like I always say, tell a friend, help me grow the show, because basically what I try to do in this show is I try to give you real analysis without all of the drama, without all of the bullshit. You know, some people just want to hear about basketball when it comes to the Knicks analysis. What kind of shooter is he? Does he play good defense? Things like that. Not all of the other shit or not just glazing over the Knicks as it's just the Knicks. Well, the Knicks have millions of fans that want to hear analysis. Yeah, we, we know we're not going to be great this year. We know we're probably going to be really bad this year. So what? We're still fans. It's still hope is eternal right now. It's The season hasn't started. Everybody has the same record. Don't count the preseason. Everybody has 0-0 record. Anyway, let me get to the news of today. So basically, the Knicks are going to win a championship now. Nah, I'm just playing. They signed Trey Burke. I had a joke, but I didn't even go with it. They signed Trey Burke. Uh, he's six foot one. I always thought he was five foot eleven. I guess they measured him with shoes for a change, which is good. I don't never know why they measure players talking about without shoes. It's just a, some things in sports, some things just period just don't make sense. Like I don't want to know what he 
unless he's playing without his shoes or I don't know. Anyway, so they signed Trey Burke and this tells me a few things. And again, I won't say red flags. I won't. It's not a red flag. It's more of a hmm. So this tells me something. This tells me that the Knicks are not satisfied with their point guards, the point guards on their roster. You know, it, it tells me that. So let's look. Let's see who's who may be the odd man out if Trey Burke makes the team. And also, it's, it also tells me sometimes as a GM, front office, coach, you want to catch lightning in a bottle. And what I, what do I mean by that? You sign Trey Burke or, you, you know, you bring him in. He's 25 years old. He was the ninth pick in the draft, by the way, in the back in the days, a few years ago. So the funny thing is he was a star of the team. Hardaway was the 24th pick. Ain't that something? But Hardaway's six foot six. That's the difference. So... That's not the only difference. So you try to catch lightning in the bottle. If you think about it, the last one I could really remember, maybe there's been, oh, no, the last lightning in the bottle I've seen a team catch was the Boston Isaiah Thomas. I remember Isaiah Thomas, little Isaiah Thomas. I remember him from Sacramento. I was like, yo, this kid is nice. I remember they started comparing him to Eric Bledsoe. They was like, yo, he's just as good as Eric Bledsoe. Look at his PER. He's good. Give him more time. Let's see what happens. He went to Phoenix, balled out there too, and then they traded him for nothing. Really. So he ended up in Boston, and Boston caught lightning in a the bottle. There was another time uh, Chauncey Billups, before he went to Detroit, he was on. He was he bounced around a little bit. I think he was. I know he got drafted. I think he got drafted by the Celtics. I think he was like the fourth pick in the draft or something. He bounced around for a minute, and then he got. He had a late. You know, he bloomed a little late. And he turned out to be a great player. For 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 years. For he had a good six six, seven year run of really being really good. And sometimes you do that as a team. You hope you get lucky. Maybe you only get two or three good years out of the player. That's why uh, another thing like Michael Beasley, everybody act like Michael Beasley doesn't have talent or he can't put it together. Now I believe that Michael Beasley will never reach the potential we thought he had. I don't think that at 28, he is what he is. I believe he's a bench scorer. Sometimes, yeah, I just think he's a bench scorer. I don't think he's going to ever turn into like a... He might have a... He All right. Some players sometimes have one really good year. Like they focus and they had that really one... I remember Anthony Mason, he got traded away from the Knicks, and he was good with the Knicks. But he made the all-star team with the Miami Miami Heat. If You got to look that up. I didn't realize that. He made the all-star team. So players are capable of turning in an extraordinarily good season. Doesn't mean they're going to be good for many years. But a player like Burke, back to Burke, he's a guy I would take a fly at on because he's 25. Same thing with Cancer. That's why I wasn't mad about the trade. You wasn't getting much back, but you got a guy in cancer who's good, and he's 25. And again, I like him. I like him more than Hernandez. Don't get me wrong, I like Hernandez. But right now, cancer's the better player. See, again, let me just explain this real quick. I'm the kind of Nick fan that I don't root for particular players. I want the team to win. If there's a player better than Przingis, then he should take his spot. Like, I don't, like, that's just how I think about it. I don't think like, oh, I should, well, I really like Hernan Gomez because, you know, we drafted him and he's our guy. So I hope, no, no, I don't give a damn. If we got a person that's better, I don't care if we draft him or not. I want good players on the Knicks that can help us win, period. That's it. I don't care. And you know who showed me that? My New York Yankees. Because I was caught up in that. We signed Wade Boggs. I was like, we got Wade Boggs. Ah, we got Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon just killed us in the playoffs last year. We signed him. Because winning teams don't give a fuck about that shit. He's a good player. Bring him over. You don't get caught up in that. And fans shouldn't either. So anyway, we signed Trey Burke. Who can shoot. He can run the pick and roll. And he's a young veteran. It's good to have young veterans. Because when I look, we have all these point guards on the rosters. What's his? Uh, Xanthan Mays. He's going to get cut. He's going to be probably one of the second cuts. He's going to get cut. Um, Chasen, this is his name, Chasen Randall. I don't even know if he's still on the team. He's going to get cut. 
I think that Xanthan Mays may go to Westchester. I think Chase and Randall's going to get cut outright. I, I just think he's just, he's not an NBA player. He's just not. And this is the problem with how a lot of these point guards, a lot of point guards come into the league as really scorers. And if you don't know how to run a pick and roll and you're only six foot one, six foot two, you think you're going to come in here scoring unless you're Iverson. That's not going to happen. You're going to have to be more traditional as a point guard unless you're Westbrook. And even Westbrook is still learning how to be a traditional point guard. Or if you're unless you're an explosive scorer like Kyrie. And a lot of these guys are just average. I'm sorry, way below average. And then you have a guy like Ron Baker. I'm a fan of Ron Baker. Why am I a fan of Ron Baker? I think that every team needs players like Ron Baker. What kind of players is this? Rough and tumble guys that will run through brick walls, that will just play their heart out. They don't care about nothing. They just want to win the game. Unselfish, will give up their body. Golden State has a player like that. Draymond Green. He's like that. He's a rough and tumble player. He doesn't care if he knocks you on the floor while he's going for the ball. He's just trying to win. Della Vadova's a player like that, even though he's borderline dirty sometimes. I don't like those players. Uh, Quincy Acey, another energy guy, but he's, he put it like this. These are guys that you, Andre Robinson, these are guys that you hate to play against, especially on the playground, because these guys, they'll hurt you on the playground. It's like, dude, you're diving on the floor. This is This is concrete. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> but you have those guys, you know. I, I don't like playing around. I don't like no, no, no. You ain't taking out my knees. I, I got a job. So anyway, Ron Baker is that guy. I think that his best case scenario is a rotation player, probably seven to eight on the bench as far as the uh, depth, seventh to eighth in a rotation for a very good team, a playoff team, a championship contender. That's his ceiling. I don't think his ceiling is starting. I don't think he'll ever be a starter unless you have a lot of good players around him. Like, for example, Andre Robinson. Andre Robinson's not a good offense. He's, he actually is a minus offensive player. But when you put Melo and Paul George and Westbrook, yeah, okay, he can start. That's how Baker, Baker would have to start. Like, if, say, uh, Hardaway Jr. becomes a star this year and, 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 Porzingis becomes a superstar and everybody else, then okay, you can have Ron Baker in there because then you have the other players that pick up the slack for the things he doesn't do. But Ron Baker is a bench guy and he's he's, he's tough. And I think that Hornacek took a look and said, you know, Sessions is only good for certain periods of time. He gets hurt a lot. He hasn't looked great in preseason. Like I said, he's had spurts of good play. It's the reason why these guys are available. He's had spurts of good play. You have, and that's the thing about Sessions and Jack. There's times you see them do things, and you're like, wow, that's, damn, he's good. Look at that. But you got to understand they are who they are. They only do this once in the blue or a few times or have a good game. Jared Jack's coming off injury. He's looked good in spurts. But for the most part, he's not steady. And you can't go into the season with that when you have a point guard. Like I said, look. Frank Nilakina might start, and I said this in the beginning. I believe he should start because I believe he's the best defensive guard on the team, best defensive point guard, because Courtney Lee is a very good defender. So I'm not going to put him ahead of Courtney Lee when I haven't really seen him as much. But from what I've seen, and of course what you've heard, he's a good defensive guard, and he can shoot the three. And I like the way he play makes. He looks like actually a pure point guard. If you see, he's always looking for his man always so but what scares me about him is he's six five and he was listed at 170 i hope it's at least 180 because 170 is frail thin at six five it is it is like dude you need to eat some food thin it is super thin because let me give you an example of, if y'all remember kenny anderson was six foot one 170 and if you remember when he was played he was very skinny super skinny so that's what I, that worries me about Frank being frail. You know, frail players break. That's why short players always have injuries because they're going in against guys at a 230, 240. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's different, you know? So, I mean, that's a little, little, like I said, a small concern. I will talk about injuries a little bit in, a little bit in this podcast. 
So they bring in Trey Burke. And, you know, you try to catch lightning in the bottle, and I think they can. I I, I think that with with his style of play, with Hornacek's style of coaching, offense, it's suitable for point guards. And sometimes point guards or players have not been put in the right position. For example, I think that Lance Thomas ended up getting a contract with the Knicks because I know I, know I said I wasn't going to say triangle, but Lance Thomas wasn't really a good NBA player. He came here... And the triangle fit him perfectly because he was a he was a good mid mid range shooter and a good defender, so he would come off them curls and hit those jump shots. Eventually, through hard work, he he became a better three point shooter. Because there's times when I watch this team, they want to get up and down the court, and he is so flat footed, he doesn't have any kind of pace to his game, and you see the difference when he's out of that system. That system was good for him. It made him a better player, but this guy you keep because he's a good defender. You know, he's smart. And, and, and by the way, like I said, the Knicks are not tanking. They're trying to win games. It just so happened that they, they don't have a lot of talent. But they're not trying to tank. This is not let's get rid of players and not know. They're trying to sign players who are in what they're looking for, the age bracket and talent-wise. So they're not trying to tank. They're trying to win as much as possible. And see what, it, you know, chips fall where they may. So, I want to talk a little bit about injuries. Um, so, I don't think Chris Stapps is going to play Friday. He said he's feeling good. But he said, you know, there's a 40% chance of him playing. He said, you know, he don't know. You know, I, He said he could feel it when he lifts it up. You got to understand. You don't play a player in a preseason game, the last preseason game, when... The season starts in a week, and it's 82 games. So, Chris Stapps, I can almost guarantee he's not playing Friday. I hope I'm wrong because I want to see him. But you got to understand, if he's not 100%, there's no reason to play him. Let him sit, and then they have a full, they're not almost, well, they have a few days of practice. He could do that and be ready for the home opener. That's much more important because what's going to happen is, the Knicks are going to go into the season without things set. And th this is why I don't like what Hornacek was doing with the chemistry and the rotations. Dude, I just believe pick the top players who you believe and then you put them in there. And if it's not working, then you mix it up. Then you try to see who, who you don't just do that. You put the best players in there and then you work from there. You know, and, and it's very frustrating because being that he didn't do that, Hornacek I'm talking about, there's no real chemistry on the team right now. So that's going to be losses regardless. There's no real chemistry. So my whole point was, if he would, like, I think for the first three preseason games, he should have played the same people, tinker a little bit. You can, you don't, you can tinker within the game. Should have played the same guys. Like, these are the guys I believe are going to start. I want them to get used to each, used to each other. But he's mixing and mixing and matching, looking at, you know, I, I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. But one good thing I could say that may have come out of that, Damian Dotson. I know I mentioned him in the last podcast. I'm going to mention him again because I was thinking, Doug McDermott. Let's look at, let's think of Doug McDermott. A lot of people say, you know, well, maybe, maybe we could start him, right? Maybe we could start him. And when I look at Damian Dotson and I look at Doug McDermott, I'm not, I'm not going to say Damian Dotson's better than him because, again, he hasn't played NBA games. However, he's a great shooter. He's a likes out shooter. We know this. We've seen this. This is not this, That's a translatable skill. So if you've seen a guy shoot well in college, he's going to usually shoot well in the pros. It's a translatable skill skill just, as, just like defense. And he plays good defense. And he has good size. Now, he's shorter than uh, McDermott. McDermott is like 6'8". But he's 6'6". Six, six, he might be able to slide into that wing position, especially being the, 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 the reason why I'm saying this is because he's a good defender. He's been playing good defense. That is so think about it. He could be a three and D guy out the gate and maybe a little bit more. So I think because the Knicks need perimeter defense. Now, he'll struggle at times against small forwards, obviously. 
the better ones, but everybody struggles against great players. That's like saying, oh, and I always hear people say, oh, what's going to happen when they go up against the Russell Westbrook? Or Russell, West, Russell Westbrook bakes everybody. It does not matter. Chris Paul going up against West, Russell Westbrook is going to have a problem. Steph Curry is going to have a problem. And so is Russell Westbrook if he goes up against Steph. The great players don't get stopped even by the great players. It just doesn't happen. So every time I say, what, when I hear them say, what are they going to do when they go up against this great player? They're going to do what everybody else does. Get their ass busted. <laughs> Nothing different. Great players. If you look at even when LeBron was going at Durant and, and, and Durant going at Dur uh, uh, LeBron in the finals, two great players. They wasn't stopping each other, really. They, they, they can't because they just too good. They just too good. When players are that good, you're not stopping them unless you have a guy like Kawhi who's another level special, who's who's alien special on defense. He's alien special on defense. He's strong, he's fast, he's athletic, his hands is huge. Dude is one of my favorite players in the league, by the way. So I think the Knicks oh, back to the injury. Let me let me finish up with the injury. So I think Chris Stapps is fine. I think that he's gonna take Friday off. He's gonna have a whole week to get his body right. So I think he'll be fine. And um I think Nilakina, I'm hoping he's fine. They said knee bruise. But Knicks have lied to us forever. And I don't know why they do that. I don't know what the purpose of doing that is. See, I understand it in football because you don't want teams to be able to prepare for certain plays. But I don't know why you would do that in basketball. If he tore a ligament, let us know. If he bruised his knee, let us know the truth. I mean, it's just frustrating when they do that. And they be like, day-to-day, day-to-day, day-to-day after three weeks. Day-to-day, day-to-day. I don't think it's that serious. I don't think signing Drake, Trey Burke had really anything to do with Nilakina as far as that. I think they want depth. And they want a guy that even if he's not really good, like great, he's going to be healthy enough to play these games. He's going to be healthy enough to play these games. Sessions, Jack's coming off a major injury, and Sessions get hurt all the time. So what if they both are out? And you got Ron Baker and Nilakina. That's not going to, you know, you need another guy that can actually run the point, that knows how to run the point. And Honasek may know him from his days in Utah. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. I see the, I like the Knicks that the Knicks are being proactive. You know, so I, I don't think it's an injury thing y'all have to worry about. But I think the Knicks, you know, as I was thinking, as I, I was, I think the Knicks starting lineup, I think I have it set in my head now. I think I know who I want. I think I know the starting lineup I want to see. Opening game. Oh, God. They play against OKC. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm about to cry, too. They start opening the season with OKC. Oh, 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 God. But you know what you can look forward to? Guess what? Melo is going to be guarding Chris Stapps Przingis. <laughs> They're going to guard each other. They have no other choice. Melo's going to play the four most likely. He's probably going to guard Chris Stapps. Or they're going to do some kind of switch. See, that, that that's a very tough first matchup. Well, let me say with my starting lineup, I want it to be in... Let me just do the quick matchups. Good Lord, I'm just like, wow, this is funny. So I want Frank Nilakina to start the season. I want him to be the game one starter. And this is not emotion. This is basically, in the short period of time I've seen him, he's been the best point guard on the team. It's, it's simple. He's the best point guard on the team. That's why I think he should start. Not because I think he's the future or anything. No, I've seen the, the little scrimmage they had. And a little bit of time he's played, he's been their best point guard. Simple. Shooting guard, obviously, hard away. Now, this is the one I think that they should start the season with Damian Dotson at the three. He's not a three. He's more of a two. But again, basketball is more positionless now. And being that he plays good D, you got a defender in Nilakina, You got an okay defender in Hardaway. And you have a... a a, a decent defender in Dotson. So now your perimeter, you have good perimeter defense. You have athleticism at all three spots, which is important 
for a defense. It's important to have a defense where you have athleticism on the perim perimeter. It's very, very important. And, and it also, if you think about it, what I really like about defensively, what this really can mean for the Knicks is that Frank Nilekina, 6'5", Tim Hardaway, 6'6", Dotson, 6'6", all athletic, you know they can switch. They can switch easily. They can all switch. They can switch from forward to point guard. Now, I don't want Frank guarding small forwards. However, for a switch, just for a shot, you don't lose size. You don't lose much size. What, an inch? Nobody's going to notice that. <laughs> well, you don't lose anything with Frank because apparently his arms make, up, make it up anyway. And then at power forward, obviously, you know that guy, that tall guy, KP, and that center, and it's Cantor. I like that starting lineup. If, if, if Dotson is going to play, continue to play the defense he play, he's played in the preseason. Now, I'm going to tell you this. And the reason why I want Dotson in the starting lineup, again, is his defense. But he's not going to forget how to shoot. So, yes, I want Dotson in the starting lineup. Again, when you're a young team, when you're a team rebuilding, you look for every effort to catch lightning in the bottle. The Sixers got that with Robert Co Covington. He turns out to be a good player, and he's with the team long term. So you look for that. Because if Dotson, what if Dotson starts at the three? Now, again, I think he's a natural two. He could play the three, but I think he's a natural two. And I think if we got like a star level or a really good three, he could be a guy off the bench who could play the two and the three, which is fine. I'm all for that. But right now, what if they catch a light in the bottle? What if he starts at the three and he's doing the same thing he's been doing? You got to understand, that's the that's the positive between, that's the positive behind signing older players, four-year players. These guys come into league as grown men. See, years ago, before players came in, I remember when, Ewing and all these guys came out of college. They could have went straight to the pros because there was no rules against that. But they would come into the league polished, ready, like come in and just do what they do because they would be in four years or three years of college. I think what uh, Shaquille stayed three years in college. I think Ewing graduated. I think Olajuwon did four years. And what happens is when you come into the league and you're coming into the league at 22, 23, you're a man. You're not coming in as a teenager where the whole world is like, wow, look at everything that's going on. You know, again, I'm all for high school people, high school basketball players going pro instantly. But I'm also for the veteran college player if he has a talent and ability. And that's why you always see uh, players slip through the cracks. Because coaches are always looking, coaches, I'm sorry, GMs are always looking for potential. Oh, he's too old. He needs to be 19. That's the only way he's going to be good. That's not really true. That's not really true. You know, and I think that you put him, what I like, I think Dotson playing a three right now is a safe spot for him. Why? Because he's going to mainly be a spot up, spot up guy. And he's not going to be asked to create or do much. What's going to happen is he's going to ask him to play good defense, but that's it. Honorable mention, Courtney Lee starting, but he's 6'5", 6'4", 6'5". So you don't want to start him. And he's not, Dotson's a little stronger than that. And Dotson can turn into a full-time three if he puts on more weight. He's what, 205? If he, if he was about 220, even being a 6'6", he could be, because Iguodala's 6'6". He's not a shooting guard. He's not a shooting guard. He plays small forward. I mean, he plays both, but he's but he's six six and he's probably about two twenty five. So that's the kind of if he can get his weight up, he could probably be our future small forward. Who knows? Who knows? But for now, for this season or for the beginning of the season, I would like to see him start. Try to catch lightning in the bottle. If he's overwhelmed, you take him out. There's no reason to start Beasley. If you do, I'm not mad at it, but there's no reason to start Beasley. McDermott. I see the problem with McDermott is again. You want to catch lightning in the bottle, but the problem with McDermott is McDermott, he's not a good defender. And your team sucks defensively. So 
I feel like if the Knicks start the season starting two rookies that play really good defense and win games with two rookies, man, man, that's the head of schedule. That's why I want them. That's one of the another reason why I want them to start. You know, so they'll have athleticism, then they'll be able to run. Then you got a lights out shooter as in Dotson. When you running, come on, man, that's a good athletic team. First of all, your first four positions, all way up to power forward, is hyper athletic. And then you have Cantor, the brute. We need a nickname for Cantor. He's probably the brute, like Brutus, not the brute, like dumb brute, but just like Brutus. Dude is a bull. He's a wrecking ball. And you need guys like that on your team. You know, so, uh, you know what I mean? Because, matter of fact, now that I think about it, if you start Dotson, you might be able to play some decent defense. He plays D. Hardaway tries to play D at least. Nilakina's is known for D. And Kristaps plays D. And Cancer rebounds. And if you do this, your bench becomes really strong. Because guess who you got on the bench? You got Baker or Trey Burke or Sessions or Jack. But I don't think you'll have that. Let's just say you have Baker. You have Baker, Courtney Lee, Michael Beasley, Lance Thomas, and Hernan Gomez. That's a nice second five. Baker and Lee play D. I didn't even mention McDermott. You need scoring. You got that from Beasley. You got rebounding from Hernan Gomez. You got defense from Lance Todd. It, it helps the team. If you if 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 Damian's able to start, if Mr. Dotson is able to start, it helps the team's bench. It helps the team immensely, and it puts them ahead of a schedule if he plays up to that, up to the level. And like I said, all you got to do, dog, is play D and hit the open threes when you get the ball. That's it. And I believe he could do it. So, that's that. You know, I'm wondering, the Knicks cut, was it Jamel Artis? I think they cut him, right? And I thought that they were going to start cutting players, and they only cut him. I'm wondering what he did. I wonder if he was late for practice or, I don't know. Anyway, he's a, he's a bit role player, so I'm not worried. I'm just, I'm not concerned. I'm just wondering why he got cut so quickly like that. Anyway, I digress. Because they didn't cut Luke Cornett, and he never, he never even plays. You know, he never even plays. So, anyway, I just wanted to tell you that I will do a season preview sometime next week. I may do a podcast after the Wizard game, maybe the next day or whatever. I'm not really sure. But I had to do this one because I just wanted to, you know, Talk about the latest goings on with the Knicks and things like that and the signing of Trey Burke. Again, that's my take on it. And I may talk more about the starting lineup too in the future. But anyway, this has been number 50. Wow, I went over 30 minutes. I thought it was going to be 10 minutes. <laughs> this has been episode number 50, and I am your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. By the way, if you have any ideas, if you can put it in the comment section or you can email me at nickshomecourt at gmail.com. I actually have an email. I'm first time I'm telling you. You know, so if you want to holler there, things like that, I appreciate it. Or you could just put your things in the comment section and I'll talk about it later. All right. Everybody have a good day. Good night. Go Knicks. Peace.